Welcome to Game Fellas, the Retro to Modern Gaming Podcast, episode seven. Yes, we are on. We made it, guys. We made it to episode seven, which, according to the internet, is the episode that most podcasts, ninety percent of podcasts, do not make it to episode seven. So we we beat. Wow. Them. Really. Congratulations to us. Yeah, that's what uh, one of those Buzzsprout videos I watched said that. So anyway, how's everyone doing tonight? All right. Good. Yeah. All right. Looking forward to it. Luckily for you all, I have not been playing much. So I'm going to let you all talk about what you've been playing. So Mark, been a few episodes since you've been on. So why don't you kick us yeah, off? Yeah, what the hell? Okay. You've been playing. So, <laughs> so I know that our usual listening audience would probably get bored if I just continued my usual thing of playing shmups every week and just telling you about that. So this week I went out of my way to play some stuff to talk about on the show. So the first thing I was playing was some Harvest Moon 64. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. I really love that game. Why would uh, you play Harvest Moon 64 when there's been so many better Harvest Moons released since then? Because I don't think there have been, to be honest. Oh, okay. I still right. like 64 a lot more than the other ones. Okay. Explain why. I just think it's really focused and simple, and that's what I'm looking for. You know, I, I know like there's people way more into simulator games than me, but I'm kind of like if it's just focused and simple and easy to get around, that's what I like. So, and I know where all this stuff is. So, I've been really enjoying that. I and played then, a Fantasy Harvest Moon on the DS. Was the only uh, Harvest Moon game I played, and that was probably ten years ago, and I, it was fun. Fun little, fun little jaunt. Yeah, I know a lot of people have been getting into the the kind of spiritual successor genre uh, game. I can't remember what it's called now. The one on the Switch. Our, our uh, Stardew Valley. Yeah, Stardew, Stardew Valley, Valley. The one Tony, Tony's been addicted to. Yeah. On and off here. That one's pretty good, too. It's just, like I said, I just like the more simple, focused one. So I've been playing 64. Cool, man. Then, what else? Yeah. Okay, so I did that, and then I played a bunch of fighting games that I learned none of you guys seem to like, apparently, from last episode. Or poor Metal Slug. No one defended Metal Slug's honor either. I would have been if I was here, dude. I I was like, yo, (laughs) you guys should have had me on, because you guys were slamming all my favorite games. Justin thought he had me with that one, and I'm like, dude, I'm not a Metal Slug fan, honestly. (laughs) <laughs> are, you, um, are you aware of the pregnant woman phenomenon? So let me just quickly explain. If, if uh, like my wife, has been pregnant, when she is, all you see everywhere are pregnant women. The point of this is, <laughs> the point of this is, since the last podcast, I swear to God, all I have seen is metal slug. Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Every, so I feel like someone's trying to condemn me. Trying to... <laughs> it's yeah. like when you like steal a car in Grand Theft Auto and then everyone's driving one. <laughs> we live in a simulation. There you go. Yeah, that's funny. Well, the Matrix 4 was just announced, so I guess we'll find out if we're actually in a simulation or not. Don't get me started on that. Be a fun yeah, topic. that yeah, that's <laughs> off topic, but yeah. Anyway, continue, Mark. Okay. What games have you, been, have you been playing lately? So I played some Harvest Moon 64. I thought you guys might. So none of you guys will like that. Okay. Next. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing some, okay, fighting games. You guys don't like those. I like fighting games. I'm just not hardcore like you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been playing Guilty Gear a lot. Okay, Guilty Gear. Have you ever yeah. played a fighting game called Bushido Blade? Yeah. Oh, well, Hell yeah. That's a great game. Great game. Like, I haven't played it in years, but that was one of my, me and my brother's, uh, you know, main fighting games back in the mid 90s i guess or late 90s yeah that's the one where you kill each other in like two hits basically right yeah Yeah, and that was square right square did that did that game yeah it was yeah Yeah. okay Okay, have you played any more soul caliber anything mark you kind of given up on soul caliber i know you and me are supposed to play but we haven't yet yeah i know yeah no i've been playing a little bit of soul caliber okay uh yeah they they're gonna do more characters and stuff so i was like well i'll keep going more dlc yeah Okay. I won't buy it, but yeah, no, might get more people to play. <laughs> no Darth, Darth Vader or Yoda or anything this time? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay. All right. Well, anything else, man? Yeah, but I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> You're drawing <laughs> a blank. Me. All right. Yeah, well, well Derek, Derek, why don't you uh, take over and what have you been playing? 
it's going to feel like Tony's been here, but I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy fourteen because oh, wow. <laughs> Faster the Gamer got me hooked. Did he get you hooked? <laughs> yes, son of a bitch. Uh, I've been playing man. that. <laughs> I did, I never thought I was going to get ever into an MMORPG, but it's something about it is just fun to me. And it's funny because the other game I've really been playing a lot of is Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions on PSP. That's a good one. Because I love the – Tactics is the second best Final Fantasy game ever, bar none. Yeah, I really like Tactics too. It's, it's what's – like, I like it so much more than 7. That says a lot. But I'll play that at least – once every couple of years, all the way through, and that's always fun. And then um, yesterday, Devil May Cry Five came out on Xbox Game Pass. I've been trying that out, and that's actually really fun. That's cool. Yeah, um, I love the Devil May Cry series. I need to play Five. Them. Since it was free, I've been I would, I've been wanting to play. I'm like, well, might as well try it now. It's free for me. It's it's really solid, but I haven't got. Oh, I remember. I remember what I was playing. Okay, it came back to me. It was Turok, Dinosaur Hunter. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I beat that whole game in like two days. I just sat down and beat it because I was having so much fun. You and your you and your low poly uh, yeah. shooters, man. Well, I got the two <laughs> HD remakes now, Z. Yeah, they're HD, my dude. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they, that's right. Yeah. Because I've got them both on Steam. It actually plays a lot like um, Metroid Prime or Doom. Yeah. You know, it's like got platforming and it's really cool. So, so when you're yeah. playing when you're playing Harvest Moon 64, how were you playing it? emulation or is there a, a port of it a recent port well that'll come up in our next topic but on the old switcheroo <laughs> i was playing that oh, switch okay oh <laughs> all right all right all right yeah. we'll save that for later then we know, this, we know where that that topic is going <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay um justin what have you been playing man well uh after my outpouring of uh super nintendo last time um i actually uh, I've, well, I've been away, so I've been on holiday, so I've taken my Switch with me, um, and I haven't invested time in a, an RPG for a while, uh, and a game that's been sitting there that I've wanted to play uh, and finally started and really, really got into is uh, Xenoblades Chronicles 2. Okay, um, yeah. So <laughs> it's... Um, it, I mean, it's it's a really good role playing game. To be honest, it, I, I read quite a few reviews on it before I uh, took it on. Um, there was a lot of nagging issues about um, something that you can you can get lost with a little bit, which is the um, when you've kind of got things to go and find. Uh, sometimes it's not always on the same plane. Sometimes it's lower. Sometimes it's higher. And there's not <clears throat> there's not always a really clear way of getting to where you need to get. So you can invest a bit of time kind of walking around in circles thinking, hang on a minute, where should I be? Um, but look, it's got all the kind of classic manic, uh, mechanics of, you know, the role-playing game that you would want. Um, you know, you're building your characters. That's great. You're building a squad. There's a, what, what's probably really interesting to me is that the amount of story that there is that interrupts the flow of the game I wonder if that would really split role-playing game fans because I love it. And, you know, there are, there are pieces within it where, I mean, it felt like 15 minutes of, like, just story, 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 just cut scenes. I love that. Um, but I can imagine people would get a bit edgy and antsy and, you know. So I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, I think I'm about 20, 25 hours in. Um, and I'm the kind of player with that, that sort of game, which I would think most people are as well, that I sort of divert off of the main quest as quick as I can uh, to go and level up and grind through the countryside and find things that I probably shouldn't and amuse myself being level four, trying to take on a level 81 baddie and getting absolutely toned. <laughs> uh, and just, just because it's that much more satisfying when I come back and I'm a level 381 and I can kick his ass so uh uh yeah it's good although um something that i particularly enjoy uh which may great as well is that the voice acting is absolutely heinous that's it, what i've heard <laughs> it, it is disgusting uh it's I, I don't know why i mean first of all like, uh, is it castlevania symphony of the night tier stuff or is it not that bad oh, it's hideous i've never ever come across one worse it's the worst, but it's so bad, it's brilliant. So, so 
the dubbing is is terrible. You know, there are times where like <laughs> there are several frames of just rah, 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 and you're like, they're not talking. What's what's going on? But what what is interesting is that <clears throat> a lot of the cast are are British. Um, now I don't know if that's the same of what you've got in the North American region. I assume it is. Yes, it is. Um, but but they're odd accents. They're 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 Scottish. One of the the main characters is Welsh, um, which is very odd because you know even English people aren't very good at understanding Welsh sometimes, um, yeah. and you know there's even some idioms that they use. But I think what's what's pretty cool. <laughs> you say you got to laugh. The main character he talks very much in uh, with the same lack of. Um, true passion as what i would describe uh, like a cartoon character for a children's cartoon um you know it's it's you know they're off trying to to, to do something fundamental to sort of you know classic role-playing game story and it's this sort of very insincere kind of come on guys we really need to go and find this thing <laughs> wow well, <laughs> followed, followed by <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just you've got to love it it's it's, it's so it's so bad. It's the type like of situation where you, it's the type of situation where you just you play the game with in Japanese and just read the subtitles. That's what I would I, do. Yeah, I mean the thing is though, like I said, like early on in the game, I thought, what is going on here? I, I actually very quickly grew to quite love it because it, it's so comically bad. Um, but say the game itself, um, the the score, the musical score as well, I'm very impressed with. Really, really like that. Um, yeah, just the, the whole concept of it as well. It's um, you know, it's really grabbed me, and that that is uh, that is all I, I've been investing my time in. I mean, I'm one of those c kind of people as well that typically I'm not very good at jumping between games. You know, for me, when I'm going to invest, I'll now yep. I will now push through eighty hours on this. Yeah, same with me. Complete it, be happy. That's that's how I am. I I, I just can't dot around. So. That's why I said for me to take on an RPG, I have to know that I'm going to be investing. I'm, a few weeks are going to go into this elapsed time. So uh, I'm the exact yeah. same way, man. It's, 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 how, it's how I am. It's like I get hooked in one game and that's the game I play for weeks or months and I don't touch anything else, you know, for the most part. Um, what uh, was, you know, was Xenoblade Chronicles 2, was that a uh, port from the Wii U? Was that on the Wii U originally or no? It just came out on the Switch? The first I, one. It's exclusive. It's yeah. exclusive. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was wondering it's, about that. I wasn't sure. I played uh, through part of the first one, but I didn't finish it. It's um, yeah. I, I mean, I would definitely for for uh, for role playing game fans certainly. Um, yeah, you, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. It's it's a good game. I I don't think it's easy on uh, sort of midway RPG fans. You have to enjoy RPG games, or I think this is going to grate pretty quickly. Um, I quite like the battle system as well. That's a, a different type of system that I'm not entirely used to. It's you know it's got a little subtle play on um, ran, sort of random encounters and that kind of thing. That's quite nicely done. So uh, yeah, apart from the horrendous dubbing and uh, an accent, which which I love uh, now, uh, yeah, very very good. Okay, cool. Xeno played Chronicles two. Um... I guess that leaves me, and like I said, I haven't been playing, well, I've been playing something, but it's something I've already talked about, and that's No Man's Sky. Uh, it's, like you said, man, um, it's hard for me to jump around in games when uh, one game has its hooks in me. I just, it's like, I was going to play, try and play Final Fantasy XIV with Derek and Tony, but I, I just can't do it. It's like, I, I want to play No Man's Sky. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just, yeah, I think Soren, I think it's uh, got its hooks in Soren again, too, from me and him, we're, have, we're talking uh, the other day about he was trade playing it in VR, you know, which is just, that was one of the things that the newest update beyond added was the VR support. And for me, that just sounds like a puke fest, you know, I walking around a planet and going like this, you know, and, Oh man, I just think my head would spin. I'd like to try it. If I'm not going to buy a, a VR headset, but I need to try it. Yeah. I'd like you to try it, Derek. You let me know how it is. <laughs> you know how it is in VR, man, <laughs> when you can try, but yeah, I want. I kind of want to uh, later in a later episode. I kind of want me and Soren and Derek to uh, have a roundtable about No Man's Sky and about Beyond and the updates. But I mean, maybe I mentioned this before, but some of the some of the things that were updated was just a lot of quality of life improvements in the game, streamlining the inventory, and uh, making it so you can hold more uh, more resources. Um, 
is expanded, multiplayer elements greatly expanded. Interface improvements, uh, NBC improvements, so NBCs actually do stuff now. They actually walk around and they have different dialogue options. And um, Yeah, they've improved the base building, all kinds of stuff they've done, uh, visual polish. So I'm really, really enjoying No Man's Sky. I've uh, been enjoying it for years on and off and I'm just, I'm back into it, you know? Oh, another, probably the most, one of the coolest things they did was they, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but they changed the look of the ships, like the scale. So they used to be, the ships were kind of small, you know, before, but now they made the scale more realistic. So when you walk up to it, it's, it's huge. You know, it's like a spaceship should look. And I guess in VR, it's like super impressive because you walk up to the ship and you're, and you have to look up at it, you know, like the look up and apparently it's really cool. So anyway, yeah, No Man's Sky, I'll save, save the rest of the talk. I got about that for another episode when we do a special on it or whatever. But other than that, um, Star Fox, uh, this is the only time I mix and match games is if I'm practicing a game for one of my runs and I'm still doing Star Fox every day. <laughs> And I got, uh, yesterday, I got a five-hit run. So that's my best yet, which uh, is pretty good. So I'm getting closer, getting closer to that zero, that uh, no-hit. Is it through all the levels or whatever? You know what I mean? Like zero, three, zero, one, two, or whatever it is. No, it's, I'm just doing uh, the first route. I'm not doing all three. Uh, I don't think the, the third route. I don't think has ever been done. Uh, there's no. I don't see any uh, any YouTube any videos on YouTube or anything for the third route. There's yeah. there's one guy that's done the, that I can tell that's done the first and second route, um, and that's I think that's it. I mean, there might be. I'm sure there's some other. Well, there's your target, Z. What? All three, one sitting. No, no, hit, oh, no. I don't have the time no, for that, man. If I if I like, <laughs> I'm gonna start. Hey, I'm gonna start with the first route. If I can pull this off. Maybe I'll try the second route too, you know. At the very least, I'll beat the second route without dying because I think that's that'll be pretty easy to do. But, yeah, man, I mean, it's still a, a formidable goal. It basically turns Star Fox into a one-hit shmup. There's a lot of one-hit shmups out there where, you know, that don't have – there's shmups that don't have shields, you know, where you get one hit and boom, you're done. Yeah. You get hit or, once, you die. Yeah, and then there you go. Game over, baby. And Sector X is another one, the one that I did on uh, Genesis, which uh, one hit, you're dead, no shields. So that's what I'm turning Star Fox into for myself is one hit, and that's it. And But in Star Fox's case, the game was not meant to be beaten that way. Because so it throws a lot of random shit at you. It does. And yeah. most of those, three of those five hits I took were from RNG elements that, uh, like, for instance, on the second level, you fly through these three asteroids, and it creates... it. it gives you a power up right it makes a power a double a uh, your double power up your double sh double shooter power up appears right so it spawned in, inside of an asteroid this time so i got hit when i went to get it you know that, that doesn't happen every time but because the asteroids are kind of spawned randomly random kind of yeah. weird shit happens you know so that messed up my run that was the first hit i took and i just kept going so just an example of how you know it's difficult it's really difficult to do it beating the game without dying is not that difficult but doing it without getting hit is difficult so so anyway that's what else I'm doing. So, all right. I think we'll wrap up uh, our little section here and move on to our first discussion topic, which is one Mark brought up, which is graded retro game collecting. Um, so in the past decade or so, the retro game collecting movement uh, has exploded, basically, as we've all seen, from conventions to modded consoles uh, to used game stores popping up everywhere to uh, millennial hipsters buying up all the TurboGrafx-16s and jacking up the value of those. Uh, it's undeniable that a new industry has been formed. So the interest in old games and consoles is at an all-time high. Uh, but with that comes a price, of course. And in recent years, we've seen the Super Nintendo library in particular uh, skyrocket in value to the point where new collectors find themselves in an expensive situation. For instance, if you want uh, a complete inbox copy of the most common Super Nintendo game there is, Super Mario World, which I think sold 20 million copies or something. Uh, that's going to cost you between 50 to $70 um, for Super Mario World. Not just the cartridge. The cartridge, I think, is even 15 or 20 now. It's getting ridiculous. But like an inbox copy, you're looking at it like it was new, you know? So, and all of that is no doubt adding to this ever-increasing value of retro games is what's called grading. That's what we're going to talk about here. For a price, you can send your games away to a, basically a plethora of different companies to have them graded, you know, quote unquote graded, which then increases their value even further, supposedly. 
one of these companies, at least one that I found when I did a little search, was called WADA Games. Uh, so you want to send them 25 bucks and uh, wait for 45 days. They will rate the, condition, rate the condition of your game. You can get a loose cartridge rated or you can get a whole box rated and basically they'll grade it on a scale of one to 10. And if you want it done faster, you can pay more money accordingly, you know? So, of yeah, of course. So what do we think about this practice? Is it a scam? Is it uh, further increasing an already overvalued market? Or is it something important for the preservation of classic video games? What do you guys think? Do you want me to go? Maybe you guys should go first because I got a whole bit. So <laughs> I want to dominate the conversation. Justin. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll start. I don't know if I feel quite so passionately about Mark. So just, yeah. Um, uh, uh, where do you start? I mean, okay. So I'm going to, I'm aware that I'm going to start to get a reputation on here if I haven't got one already as being that boring business guy. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, not, not the English guy anymore. He's, oh, is that, is that the boring business dude? Yeah, I was not the housewife's favorite? Uh, well, I'm always <laughs> that. Only for people that watch the video, not right. listen to the audio. Um, uh, look, I, from, a, from a pure business perspective, yes, I know that's boring. I, if people, if, you know, it's supply and demand. If people want to do this, <clears throat> it's ultimately their choice to send this thing away. And if there's enough of it and it creates a business, then well done to Watter, Catter, Hatter, Twatter, whatever they're called. There's a bunch of them. Yeah, they're all sorts, right? You know, look, that's, that's just business. And, and the, the consumer is kind of the idiot, I suppose, if that's what they want to do and they feel that that's going to increase the value. If you ask my opinion, I, I don't think the value of a game really should rise based on this i think again you're looking at consumer is you know first consumer sends to this company <clears throat> to pay the money to get it graded the next person that potentially at some point down the line wants to buy this game in a plastic case that someone who decided they were an authority on grading a bit of plastic with a chipset in it um made a little sticker and put it on uh you know whatever i, I I, I find it to be completely unnecessary. It does not appeal to me. Um, you know, I think something that's, that's uh, probably unsurprisingly geeky uh, is that I keep my own little lists of my own games that I like to collect, and I keep a little rating that I give them of the condition <laughs> they are in. Um, I, I that use, is geeky, man. It is, it is geeky. And there's, probably, there's apps for that, isn't there? Oh, well, yeah. There, yeah, I mean, there's websites I, for that too. Yeah, there's all sorts of shit. Justin uses <laughs> Google Sheets, um, so okay. I, I that's I just, actually a good idea. Yeah, look, I, I tell you what. Do you know why I do it as well? I actually, as you collect more and more stuff, if you're out and about and you see something, I kind of lose track of what I have and haven't got and what condition I rate it in, and I sort of think, oh, I might like a better copy or I don't have that game or whatever. You know, that's just that's me and that's just my little thing. I. I I also don't enjoy displaying stuff in those big, horrible, nasty plastic uh, things. Yeah. Uh, it, it's then not tactile. I, I just, I, yeah, for me, it's, um, it, it doesn't appeal to me. I'm, the thing I don't know is, is it appealing to people in the marketplace? Um, I assume it potentially is. I do see these things about. I mean, these... Definitely you know, is. I, 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 I saw, would say... Mm, not really. Not in my like. Dude, okay, I'll hop in. I mean, okay. Just for example, uh, before you start, okay. I wrote down notes here about this Wada company, and these guys gotta be making money. Like, just they're making schmuns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, for like I said, twenty five dollars for a loose cart, forty five day turnaround, right? So, if you want to pay forty five dollars, fifteen day turnaround. So if you pay sixty five dollars, five day turnaround. If you pay the sixty five and then add fifty to that then they'll get it to you the same day, just like their grade, you know? So then you can pay $9 for a badge upgrade. They'll give you a nice little official badge for it. $5 uh, if you want um, them to take the cartridges apart and take pictures of the board, so you can have that. $7 for post-grade photos, whatever the hell that is. $10 for a graded <laughs> report. They'll put you a whole uh, report also to go with it. $10 if you want it cleaned, like... I guess 24 hours if you want to take it apart and deep clean everything. And then another $5 if you want uh, game testing. Um, there's a UV protection case with a two-way locking system. Uh, they have a mobile app you can use. 
uh, what else? And of course they give you a letter grade, a letter or number grade, I think one to 10. I think they, yeah, it's some of these like remind me of a car wash. Like if you're in a car wash or something, you know, the different yeah. deals you can get, it's just crazy. So anyway, you can go ahead, Mark. That, I just wanted to get all that, all that out of there. So people have an idea of the yeah. options available. If you want to get your games graded. that's okay. for one cartridge, right? One fucking yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. So I guess I'll start. Um, do you guys collect anything other than video games? I don't know if anyone else does. I collect vinyl records. So do I. Yeah. CDs, and I guess, but yeah, not actively anymore. And so there are certain collecting markets, I guess you could say, that are that value sealed stuff, like vinyl records, for instance. Um, I don't know if you guys know about the singer Frank Ocean, but uh, he had he's a famous so singer anyway so he had a really limited release of his last album it was like 24 hours the one one shot deal to get it and luckily i was hanging out online on his website when it came up i was like oh snap so i bought it this was a few years ago and before then i'd never been a sealed vinyl record collector i just bought the records to listen to them right you really are a millennial man you collect you collect vinyl <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm the total millennial. Okay. You're millennial hipster. Dude. Not gonna shame me out of it. Okay. Why can't anyway. millennial do? Because I so do I. <laughs> I'm yeah. a I'm a Gen Xer. Thank you. I was born in the yeah. '70s. Old fart. <laughs> so anyway, so I got this one, and I realized it shows up sealed, and I realized, shit, this one is actually worth something because it was such a limited release, and it's so hyped up or whatever. So I I wanted to open the damn thing and listen to it, but for two years I. I knew if I just opened it, I'd lose $500 or something. So I had this record sitting in my house for two years. And I, like last month or two months ago, I was like, fuck it. And I sold it for like $500 or whatever. And so that's the, that doesn't happen with video games as of right now. You don't buy Final Fantasy 15 and then say, oh, shit, I can't open this. Because, you know, it would be worth something sealed someday. But what... What these, what these collectors are trying to do is they're trying to, I guess, create a new trend within gaming where people aren't going to value the games, you know, based on the titles or whatever. They're going to value them based on the box and the quality of the sticker. And I think that's, that's totally different than something like vinyl collecting or comic collecting. So I feel like there's like this company, Water or whatever, they're like trying to push this into the collector's like video game collectors, but you don't right. hang around with, you don't hang around with video game collectors and they're like, yo, I got this sick sealed copy of whatever, Gradius 4. I mean, it's, I play it, but I can't because it's sealed. So, but check it out, the box. Isn't that, look at the condition of this box. Look at the condition of the artwork on this box. This is sick. Video game people don't do that. So I feel like they're trying to turn video games into like, vinyl records or comic books or something like they're trying to turn them into paper like paper commodities rather than digital commodities this is the if you can watching the video version the only pla in plastic game i have is guardian legend because it's probably it's my in my top three favorite games and i bought a complete inbox copy with a pr plastic protection cover it's in really good shape um and that's it that's all just because i love the game so much you know? but you've opened it right of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but I have like with, a, I have with like, a vinyl record. If you touch that that shrink wrap, if you nick it or open it, boom. Yeah. Goodbye value. Yeah. So this right. would mean for video game people, same You thing. can't play your freaking games anymore because you can't open them. It's stupid. Yeah. Well, the same with vinyl. You can't listen to the vinyl if it's. You still can't listen to it. Thing, so know? vinyl collectors, what they do is they buy the vinyl, they set it on the shelf, they have their little house parties. Oh, check this shit out! You know, drinking their wine. But then they listen to it on CD <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so, I thought vinyl sounded better than CD. So it, yeah. And that's weird to me because, okay, admittedly digital audio formats are a superior format to vinyl, but vinyl has a feel of its own. And I'm sorry, but if you click media, media is meant to not be set up on a shelf. It's meant to be enjoyed. Right. Yeah. A sealed, okay, like if you want to keep, like, for example, um, I've got a copy. I told you I'm an Earl that Z got Greg Johnson to sign for. Oh God, it's still sitting here. I need to send it to you. <laughs> Anyways, so I probably won't put that in my Genesis, but that's something different than yeah. There it is. It's something a little bit different than Greg and Mike. Right. That's that's an actual collector's item, though, right? Like, yeah. That's what makes it special is because it was signed. But if it was just a normal copy of Toe Jam and Earl, 
No, we go to my gym so I can play because that game's great. You can play it, right? So. And no one should collect media just to have it as a figure on a shelf. And these grading systems to me are just a way to make a, a value market that just doesn't exist because yeah. collectors yeah. are buying these, and there is a market for these. There is definitely a market, but it's not the same market that us collectors would go into because we're also wanting to play them. And like, I'm not a completionist collector anymore. I just buy games I want to play, but I'm not going to buy a game that's sealed up in a damn plastic case with a shitty piece of metal coin, metal, probably aluminum foil, and a number someone gave it arbitrarily and pay four times the price. It's stupid. It's like there, yeah. for instance, there was a copy. I wanted to get it on the GameCube like three years ago, two years ago. Someone was selling a sealed copy of Ikaruga for like a grand. Wow. It's like a $60 game. And the bad thing game, about right? sealed is Fuck. <laughs> if you're good with using shrink wrap, you can make it look like a factory seal. And I've worked Ikaruga. retail. Ikaruga is a CD game, right? It's on a yeah, CD. it's on the GameCube. That's too. even it wasn't that's the even Dreamcast worse. version. That's even worse because CDs are going to degrade way before these cartridges do. Which is well, well, you'll never know because you can't open the box and look. True. There could it's be wonderful. nothing in there. There could be right. an envelope. That You're says, right, man. Ikaruga was here. That's crazy. Yeah, they sell these fact these supposed factory sealed games and you don't even know if they actually are you know because you're not going to open it and find out it. and the only thing i can say is i'm okay the only way i'm okay with having your box game in a plastic thing is just for protection's sake so when you're not playing it it's okay but something like this graded system it's just a waste of money and it's an answer to a question no one really asked i mean good for them creating a whole market niche out of nothing but I just cannot fathom spending this kind of money, even a quarter of what they're charging, for something that has absolutely no use to me unless I'm planning to resale. And that's honestly the only use this has. One thing um, I, have use for. I would like to say to the viewers is uh, we pulled up, uh, per Derek's request, we, I pulled up these uh, comparison for something just originally sealed and then something that's graded. And uh, he wasn't kidding about the four times price. The original, oh, wow. yeah, look at that, sixty, uh, sixty bucks on eBay, and then the one that's been graded and is a considered VGA ninety plus high grade, um, whatever, uh, is two twenty. So yeah. this is Donkey Kong Land, what three? Donkey Kong Land three on Game Boy. A game no wow. one gives a shit. About. I know exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I, I, I but, like viewers can't see what we're seeing, but I did want to just throw it out there that. Like, if you go compare, um, that was a very good thing to, to bring up, Derek, because if you go compare, um, you know, what's to stop somebody from just buying the $60 and then flipping it for the 20 Nate, you know, Nate what, why in the hell did you pick Donkey Kong Land 3 of all games? It, it was just the first game that came <laughs> up when I said see. It was the first one he looked up whenever okay. it had him search. <laughs> like, well, I, um, search so. That is absolutely amazing. I think I have seen, although it's like with anything, you can put whatever price you want on it. I think I have seen a 90 plus or 95 plus Legend of Zelda Link to the Past mm. where someone, someone's put on for 10,000. Yeah. yeah. There's always I mean, like it, one that's like ridiculously overpriced. You know what's really clever about this though? And I think why it's going to work is because the games that are like really valuable are usually uncommon kind of shitty games no one really cares about. And the games that are really good, like Link to the Past, are usually not that cheap. But people, I feel like collectors want to spend money on Link to the Past. They're like, oh, that's my favorite game. I want to spend money on that somehow. I need to justify that somehow. So it's like, well, you got a super deluxe A-plus copy right here. That's like worth $500, dude, or whatever. Hmm. Or 10000 I think it's awesome. Oh, whatever it takes. I what about I that? toss out that like it's just re uh, retro gaming is just now becoming to the stage where this is a thing like uh we, like we said before the podcast baseball cards comics uh, there's a lot of things out there that get graded I right know. and it was a gradual thing those things had been out for a long long time before they were eventually worth more because they were older and because they were more sought after so it's it's kind of cool to see retro gaming coming to that light at the very least of you know now it's it's old enough now that you know it's mature yeah, yeah. It's, it's where it's worse stuff just because of the age essentially and just because you know it's you know it's a big difference though between something because i collect vinyl records right a big difference between grading a vinyl record and grading a video game is that 
you actually have to grade vinyl records because they are very delicate pieces Absolutely. of media. And so you, so when I buy vinyls, I make sure they're high grades. Like, but people just grade them. They don't send them to Johnny, the grading master, and pay $100 or whatever. They just grade them. Like when I sell vinyls, I grade them. Like, oh, this is like new or whatever, whatever. It's because if you get a damaged vinyl, you throw it away because you can't listen to it. But a video game, they're not grading like the ROM. They're like, oh, this ROM's got corruption, dude. You can't play it. They're grading the <laughs> yeah. stickers and the boxes that have nothing to do with actually playing the game. Dude, if, if you want game testing, it's, it's an extra $5. Come on. It's right. Like, yeah. list. <laughs> like I could actually see one legitimate version of it grading would be if you, were selling, if you were selling CD games, not sending them to some dude, but you're selling a CD game and you're saying, it's A plus, there's no scratches. That would be like a legit way to to grade your game like oh it has the no scratches reason yeah but you wouldn't seal it in a box and be like oh it's worth five trillion dollars now you just <laughs> you would just list that in the listing it's like oh this is ikaruga on the gamecube a plus quality there's no scratches sixty dollars but that's also i mean that's a, just a good handy way to tell that it's still a viable way to right. play. Um, one thing i want to point out for everyone watching this Retro gaming is just now getting to the point where the collector's market has gotten expensive. Do not. Look upon this as an investment. Every single collecting market has crashed multiple times. Baseball cards, Beanie Babies, Pokemon cards. Oh, Pokemon cards, big time. <laughs> and there's I have a lot, lot of value. rare Pokemon cards now that are worth jack shit. Yeah, and like there's still some weird money, but if there is a crash that's going to happen, no market compl- grows up and up and up without having a crash. I can't wait. That's basic economic. Oh, so am I. For so, us collectors. <laughs> so, so I loved the uh, absolute enthusiasm with which Derek just looked down the camera. I it's, know. <laughs> it was the word to describe for anyone. You. For anyone the who's listener. Listening. That's going in the best yeah. of episode. <laughs> so for, for anyone who's only listening, not watching, the word that I could use to describe that was menacing. That was what it was. Menacing. Don't mess with me <laughs> yeah, on was, ab- Absolutely menacing. Now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm probably going to go mildly off topic. Maybe it's one for another day. I completely disagree with that. Hmm. With collecting for investments? No, I'm not. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> like what? <laughs> you mean the no, crashing? The crashing. The, cra- the, cra- the crashing. Oh. The crashing. Get, give- video games will crash, though. I mean, I can see what you're saying. Some won't, but video uh, video games will. Video yeah, games will. Video games will not crash. Well, by the time we're sixty, you think our kids, that's, these kids, are going to want to buy fucking Super dude, Nintendo games? That's what they said. That's what they said about the housing market here in the states. What ten years ago? And oh, it's going to keep going up and up, and then it crashed. Yeah. It's uh, what? Well, well, hang on. Well, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Well, let's let Justin finish his. Okay, yeah, hang, hang on a minute. There was a lot of science behind AAA mortgages and bad debt yeah. and all the stuff behind houses. That I can argue happened. economics all night. <laughs> No, no one was collecting houses. Well, people True. were. Well, yeah, they, they were collecting houses. Yeah, they were. in the first place. Banks were collecting houses all day. <laughs> but, but, but here's the thing, right? So you, you look at those things. I know, I know what you're saying. I know the argument would be, look, these are on vogue. It's fashionable. People will fall out of fashion. Okay, so when is someone falling out of fashion with a copy of the White Album from the Beatles? Did that crash? It probably will one day. I don't oh, know. Oh, no, 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 no. I have the Beatles White Album. I have the Beatles White Album. It's not worth Jack. Right. But the numbered versions. Has it, has it, was it, was it, was it, was it ever bought at this kind of, it's a thousand dollars and now it's down here. No, no, no. These things just trickle. They just trickle. There's not, there's not this massive crash. You get, you get a wave. Certainly. There's, there's definitely a wave of enthusiasm right now. I'll give you that. That's a good point. But I'm not going to accept mm. crash. Um, I do accept that you say people shouldn't shouldn't buy it as an investment. Oh, you're absolutely right. That would be foolish right now. So if anyone's buying it thinking, yeah, these things are just going to double and treble. No. But, you know, increasingly, um, these things particularly, uh, and I do agree, they, they should be enjoyed. Video games should be enjoyed. But if they're enjoyed, that means they're being handled. There's only a finite amount of copies of every single game. The more you handle it, the more it changes. Let me give you an example. So another one of the odd things I've done in my life, I once uh, collected and sold uh, old British coins, coins that were two, two, 300 years old, right? Mm. There is only a finite amount of them. And every time you handle them, 
ever so slightly the grade changes and changes and changes. I assume you don't get it graded much like exactly what these games are doing. The, the, the value will go down if you keep touching it, okay? And that their value just goes up if you preserve them. So I, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be a crash here at all. I think video games as well, if you look at the market, it's now a bigger market than film. I think that's only going to increase. I think it's going to become more important. I think it's, this is going to become like art. I really do. Um, well, and you could be right because put this, and you made a good point. A lot of people don't realize that the video game industry brings in more money than the movie industry does now, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. when you think probably suck. Billion, well, billions. <laughs> I think there's a, a big difference though, because those coins are physical objects that cannot be reproduced, but video games are digital artifacts and so i mean i think our generation will always no. value them but as no, no. you go forwards do you think that the cartridges themselves are going to be value out yes. like atari I, I, games atari yeah. games are worth jack shit right now like but they were right, more right valuable now. before but uh, atari yeah you're right but atari games were also mass produced so another one that was interesting with vinyl another another um thing people um so oddly i have collected vinyl i've got loads of vinyl um people always think the 80s vinyl is worth loads but actually it was mass produced there's tons and tons of copies of it so actually it's not at all but no, 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 no. Th those those copies will start to dwindle demand will become more and again supply here we go boring business guys back hey hi <laughs> boring business guy um, i get what you're saying but i'm I, saying there won't ever be in the future there will not be a demand because my my children will not want super nintendo consoles and super nintendo cartridges they won't want it. They'll, well, they'll move on and Mark, just play Mark, it completely digitally. Mark, how old are you again? 27? 27, yeah. You're 27, mm -hmm. yet you're collecting vinyl. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Because it sounds better. There's a feel but, but to vinyl. I don't get what you're saying. I just disproved <laughs> your point, man. You're 27. Yeah. Vinyl wasn't even really for me either, man. And I'm, you know, 12, 13 years older than you. So. Well, yeah, but... My I'm not collecting is, vinyl where I'm dropping 8K on an album. Phil, I'm not you're interested that. in vinyl. No, but Zach makes the perfect point. Is it's not now? It's not a price discussion. It's a you're, you're collecting something. Your you, your your parents could easily have been on on a podcast. Just work with me uh, and gone. <laughs> hang on, a radio hang on, show. <laughs> hang on, hang on. My my son's never going to be interested in vinyl. Of course mm -hmm. he isn't, because mm -hmm. vinyl vinyl won't be here. It'll be a different medium. But yet, Mark's but yet, interested in well, it. Well, which but well, it's we not, not of vinyl though. I'm saying I agree. I think vinyl will go the way of video games. So vinyl will not be hot forever. It will fade out just like it did. And it's it like came video back. games. Yeah, yeah. But is it here to stay? Maybe, probably not. Like yeah. eventually why? it's gonna why? go away. Why? Because like our generation is interested in that. But moving forward, you're saying never. Never will people stop buying vinyl. I, at one oh. point people won't care. <laughs> at one point know. people won't care. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about, I don't know about never, but, you know, things become of interest, don't they? I think things are of, of more interest. I think people have more disposable income. I mean, this becomes a big economical discussion. God, I'm so boring. Zach, move on. Right. Hey, I'm, I'm bored here myself. I thought, and here I, I thought to the next time. I kind of, like, clear up my comments, because Justin made absolutely good points. The part of it about the video game market collecting, retro game market, is there's different f sections. Like, yeah. Different I sectors. Think the NES market is starting to drop already, and so yep. is the Super NES market. That's right. But it's going to change as more consoles come out. Like PS2 is going to get expensive in the next few years. All the kids who grew up with that as their first console are going to want those games. And the thing about it is, Justin made an absolutely perfect point. Collecting coins, even a replica, isn't worth anything. For example, this is a SNES multi card I got a few days ago. It's got a bunch of games on here that are super expensive as the regular game and it, they play the exact same the roms on the chips are the exact same games but this is 25 bucks it wasn't 300 or so but the price of certain parts of the market are going to crash and i'm mm -hmm. an adherent of it austrian part economic. people are investing in too the growth is the thing to be afraid the crash is a natural response to an overinflated market and for example nes and snes games were an overinflated market for a long time but I think we could have a whole episode on just this topic alone, and I would absolutely love yeah. it. 
Z. Mass collecting and the law of supply and demand. <laughs> yeah, if only someone wrote an article about using Austrian economics to explain mess collecting. Oh, wait, I did. Derek wrote this, uh, totally off topic, Derek wrote this article for our website uh, years ago, a um, couple years ago at least, uh, called Mess Collecting and the Law of Supply and Demand. And it went kind of viral and uh, got a lot of, uh, you know, got it's a lot of views. the most like well-read or well-received of any article of radio I've ever written in my life. It was good. It, it made, and you were a little bit ahead of the curve there too, um, writing it. And, uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, I did not think this topic was going to get as heated. I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and well, we're already like the whole episode. Just the, the time I'm there, buddy. I just also, I would like to, to add that there's, there, it, there are slight variations, like even with what Mark's talking about, like he's, you know, I know you were saying something about like my Pokemon cards aren't worth shit. There are some Pokemon cards that are still worth shit. Like there are, yeah. There are, but Same with magic. Magic. Very Charizard. 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 Sure. Like those, very... those Charizards that people were so sure were going to be worth like eight grand or whatever, they're not worth anything. Well, I just saw an article yeah. here recently about one that actually was worth a ton, and it, it like it, it either got lost in the mail or something. I, I can't. I was trying to find the article just now, and I, it, it wasn't popping up. But I saw it on the Facebook like feed the other day, and um, there was something about you know, original, it was an original that in one of the hologram, you know, I mean, right. it, um, and it was supposed to be worth a lot. And uh, again, I, I don't remember exactly what happened in the article, but it, it got mentioned. And so that brought that to mind when you said that there is like going to be a niche market, probably. I do agree with Mark in the sense that uh, I think it's going to be one of these things where it's going to eventually fade at least to a, to a smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller group of people. But yeah, to say, uh, I, I won't go all the way in with Mark when he says, you know, like my kids won't do it for sure. Because again, you never know, like there's always going to be hipster kids that want to do the old stuff because it's cool. You know what I mean? To them, you know what I mean? Even if it's anyway. So yeah. I see both sides. I just want to say that real quick. Okay. All right, and on that note, we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to get to the, the real heated topic. <laughs> we are back, and we are here to talk to you about hacking game consoles. Is it a moral dilemma? Question mark? <laughs> no. Um, console modding. Uh, it's been around for a while. Uh, from what I understand, at least since the original PlayStation, uh, Apparently the success of the console combined with the CD format led to mod chip makers trying to go out of their ways to circumvent Sony's copy protection system. I'm guessing this was in the mid late nineties. Um, the argument was, and always has been that gamers deserve to be able to make backup copies of their games, which I think is a valid concern. The consequence of course is that many of these mods also make pirating games extremely easy. So there's always consequences to these things, and that's where the gaming companies come into play and why they don't like hacking. So if we jump forward to the present, there is also a vibrant homebrew scene on virtually every console imaginable, from the Sega Genesis to the Nintendo Switch. But in order for these homebrew games to work, hacking is usually required. The Nintendo Switch in particular has become a hot-button topic because of Nintendo's zero-tolerance policy towards hacking. Regardless of whether your <clears throat> excuse me, intentions are for homebrew or pirating games, if you are caught with a hacked Switch, Nintendo will not only ban you from their online store and future updates, but in some cases, uh, your console will be bricked, as Mark will tell us about. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty draconian thing to do. Um, but, you know, that's what Nintendo does, I guess. So what do you all think? Uh, Can I hacking, start this off, uh, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you want. Uh, go I want to make a quick, like division here there's a difference to me hacking is such a general topic it there's is there's a difference between modding just for quality of life and for actually allowing homebrew and otherwise for example i've got it's also soft modding hard modding uh, there's yeah things. it's a whole it's a whole separate world so i brought examples for example my game boy advanced it's got an ags 101 screen in it backlight. but it doesn't with yeah, a backlight yeah. that that is the model that I first got in 2001, and I had to sit in the bright sunlight to play it. I could not play it inside yeah. or anywhere because you could yeah, not. Exactly. But Derek's, in case, you, in case you're listening, Derek has a backlit screen that he modded. Yeah, I'll try to get the camera. Yep, it's beautiful. It's actually from the SP-101, just... But, and that doesn't... It, well, piracy of any sort. 
it just makes it better. Like my Game Boy, my original Game Boy, I've got backlit. And there's nothing to like, I don't think anyone could say anything wrong with that because Japan not, would. Japan's outlawed that. Well, Japan could fuck. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Japan wait, wait. Japanese company, though. Japan is that, what do you mean Japan is outlawed that? What do you it mean? Is, you can, okay, so they've recently they passed this up. You cannot mod consoles in Japan and charge for it. So oh. if you're running, like, okay, you're running a service where, hey, I'll swap your Game Boy screens with a new Game Boy screen. You can't do that shit in Japan anymore. That's illegal. Can it's you not still illegal. sell the parts? I don't know. I don't know how far it goes, but I know you can't do a store that does that. Even any sort of hardware modding is now that's stupid off the table. Hmm, that's interesting. Huh. The other and one, though, Nintendo is a Japanese company, which yeah, wow. like you can kind of see where their yeah. line of thinking is here. Go go ahead, Derek. My Vita is soft modded. Right. Like, um, Explain what a soft mod is for those that don't know what that is. A soft mod is any way to hack the firmware that does not involve physically adding new chips. Like uh, a PlayStation mod chip would be a hard mod because there's hardware involved. Soft mod means there's software involved. Like, for example, because mine's soft modded, I can run homebrew. Like, here's Open Tyrion, which was a DOS shmup. You're welcome, Mark and Z. A oh, DOS, yeah. a DOS shmup. On the yeah, video. But, I mean, Impressive. So, yeah, it does allow piracy, but it doesn't just do that. It allows you to do, like, um, me and Justin were talking about this earlier. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card in your computer, you can actually use a homebrew software to stream your PC games to your Vita. And um, hey, also Vita's, vice versa. Vita can do but all kinds of stuff now. All right, it, well, it's really a great let me, console. Let me play that Devil's Advocate that. here for a minute. Um, it looks like Nate looked it up, and yes, uh, you are correct, Mark. Um, console modding can now land you a prison sentence in Japan. Wow. They're not fucking around. That's crazy. Uh, thank, but it, thank God here in America we don't have that. Thanks to the Library of Congress. Um, the Library of Congress. Japan's, in um, in general, at, just in general, Japan's copyright laws are uber serious. They take that stuff. Really seriously. Well, and and you do not cross our ass. This is the point I was going to make: is that Derek's showing us the positive benefits, right? But those are dead consoles. He's showing us also. They're not consoles that are supported anymore. Well, my by... switch is too far away. It's not charged, so I can't show that. But yeah, well, I'm still switch... on a switch, and I can't go online with it. And yeah, right. Now I pirate because I can't access the eShop. Now I'm going to turn Switch now. is still a, a the switch is still a console being developed for an active development. Absolutely. It's still an active console, right? So but that's also, why. I don't think anyone like no one, even someone who's on the software side, isn't like piracy is going to say anything about adding a backlight to your screen because it doesn't affect any of the functionality. No. Well, but, but again, that's I, a dead console. Yeah. Okay, so as I understand it, because we're going to probably have to, because this is such a broad topic, we're going to have to narrow this down a little bit. So, are you guys, we're just talking about the issue of modding the Switch for homebrew, right? Because, or, like, I'm not here to defend Switch piracy and say, yo, just right, pirate right. the shit out of the Switch. That's not what yeah. I'm coming from. The, the, what I want to talk about is specifically what we were talking about, what gave us this whole idea to begin with what, last week or whatever it was, which is, for, for the listeners, um, me and Justin uh, making fun of, well, well, we were kind of being mean to Mark because Mark, Mark came in the chat one day and he's oh, like, right. okay. He's like, I have to talk shit on all my favorite games. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mark comes in the chat and he's like, my Switch is bricked. Uh, Nintendo bricked my Switch. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? They tried to brick it. They tried anyway, to brick it. They right. tried to. They couldn't do it, but they tried. So Mark, and for reference, Mark and Derek have both hacked their Switches. Also for reference, and we've talked about this in an earlier episode, Derek's, Derek got banned from Nintendo's online service because they detected that he had a hacked console, right? So, Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, and me and Justin were like, well, okay, you hacked a Nintendo console that's in active development and is huge at the moment. Uh, what do you expect is going to happen? That that was our stance. Me and Justin and, are like, you know, okay, what do you expect? I, I'm a big supporter of if you can't hack your devices, you don't own them. But I have no qualms whatsoever with being banned from online play simply because people can and will use it to cheat. And that's just stupid. You know, that's just a jerk move. Yeah. And I've got nothing against that. But right. 
I'm not hurting anything if I have homebrew. Piracy is a different argument. And yes, I've pirated. I'm not going to lie to you all. <laughs> all but, right, FBI, where you at? <laughs> but the thing is, what actually got me caught and got me banned from Switch is that I have Retro Arch installed, and they caught me playing on that. Technically, in Nintendo's eyes, that's piracy. Even if you're playing uh, Super yeah. Mario World, we could get, we could get really that. deep into that. So look yeah, at look yeah. they took down that's the like EMU Paradise. Other, yeah, that's like a whole other set of. It issues. is, yeah. But also, yeah. like, but they you also saw that article, right, where the Nintendo was selling some delicious ROMs from EMU Paradise on their yeah, like the NES stuff because they didn't want to yeah. dump them themselves. You know, dump the ROMs themselves. Yeah, the right. funny uh, thing hold is, on. Or they couldn't figure out how to do it. J- Justin, uh, you haven't said a word. Give us your um, thoughts. Well, I've just been listening. Playing with himself. I want, I want Justin <laughs> to have a little say here. So go yeah. ahead. Uh, get, get my back, man. Get my back. I think you guys should go first. <laughs> that way we can kind of focus in because... Go ahead, Justin. Yeah, right. I, I, I do feel like Mark's constantly under attack. Um, <laughs> millennials. That's just my life, dude. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. What if everybody gets to go? You're on. not supposed to defend him. No, yeah. So, so no, you you are absolutely right that there. This is a broad topic that if you try and cover with one brushstroke, it it's going to just spiral out of control. So, do I have a moral issue with a lot of this? Not especially. Do I have a problem with hard modding when you're talking about things like backlights? Not really. Do I have a problem with that, especially on consoles that are now effectively defunct? No. Um, I think we were talking about this a little bit earlier, about does anyone have a true understanding of all of the terms and conditions, all of the small print, all of that which you effectively take on and are bound by uh, when you purchase a console? The reality is no one reads that stuff. Um, the, The unfortunate thing is, you know, let's look historically, and, and I think you're right, Mark, about uh, emulators and ROMs. That, that opens up another can of worms. <laughs> historically, the reason that people do this is to play games that they don't own, that to, to play on emulators, to do this. That is why, where a lot of this came from. Um, and it's all well and good waving your hand in the air. And that sounds like I am now directing it at you. I'm not. I'm directing it at everybody the community uh, and saying well hang on a minute i'm not one of those bad guys i i just i just do this good thing over here well ha- why why is it for nintendo to police who's the good who's the bad here's the rules here's the terms if you don't like them tough shit it, it's it's kind of you know going into this halfway house just because you've got a good heart that's great go and speak to nintendo about that and see if they'll sort that out but it, it's that's just not how it works. You know, it wasn't developed to be a console and a piece of hardware on which you can, you know, is an open source piece of technology. Um, if that's what you want, go to NVIDIA and all of those component parts and go and build yourself a console. Yeah. And that's a good okay. argument. Okay. All right. Have I got, is, is that, I've got your back, Z. That was pretty good, right? That was good. Yeah, that was, and I, and, and that's kind of what you're thinking, right? All right. So yeah, I'm, and here's and here's and here's what I say, and this is what me and Justin both said, is that when Derek originally got got banned from online, he was pissed. He's saying now he has no issues with, it, but that's that's bullshit, Derek. You were. Mad. <laughs> I say mad. now I don't. Yeah, now you don't. But when you got banned, you were pissed. You're like, man. Oh, yeah. I was mad too because I wanted to play Smash with you, and now we couldn't play because you ha- hacked your day. Had that. But I mean, like, I get why they do it, but I was still upset because of course I was you paid. You had just you had just paid fifty dollars for the online service, right? And then he gets paid. yeah, and that so it's useless, right? Okay. Well, my and 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 my uh, and my attitude is well, what did you expect? You know, you you hacked your console, and now you you're paying the consequences. You should. And the funny that. thing is, at that point, I hadn't pirated yet. <laughs> yeah that's why it's bad. <laughs> yes yeah. right yeah. i qualified right. it <laughs> justin you i'm gonna hit you you're from england you guys in the 80s had the microcomputer revolution we everyone did. had a microcomputer. yeah the sinclair and the spectrum and all that yeah. how many games did people pirate back then and it didn't I, require modding at all i pirated oh. pc games back then dos games I oh wouldn't. but like for them it says on cassette you just need a dual deck machine yeah. And so, Justin, come on, man. You know you did it. So you're you're absolutely right. <laughs> Everybody did it. Everybody did it all the time. I'm not. I'm not. Hang on a minute. I'm not. I'm not actually 
necessarily. I'm not going to wave my, my halo around here, polish it. Here we go. <laughs> and, and, and not condemn, and, and, sorry, and, condemn, partial, and condemn piracy. That, that's, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, because, damn, I you. But, but, but when I did that, you know, I'd have been a very small boy at the time. But yeah, you're right. Dual tape decks, nice and easy. Tape's done. Everyone did it. Everyone in the school playground, right? The one one tape went round. Da, 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 da. The same way that you um, would do that with a, a cassette, oh, cassette album, music. music. Yeah. Exactly. yeah same. And CDs in the 90s, yeah. If anyone, yeah. If, if, if anyone said they've never pirated music, I would not believe that. Oh, absolute it's, lie. But, yeah, absolute lie. But, but there, wasn't, there wasn't something that said, oh, hi, um, I'm Commodore. And uh, if I if I had some kind of technology in the eighties, which I don't, that I recognised the tape is not official on the media on a third party tape deck anyway, going into the side of my computer, nah, that's that's not that's a different argument. That's, yeah, that's, just, that's, that's, that's a piracy <laughs> argument. That's a piracy argument. That's okay. just a, a, a pure so, piracy argument. Okay, I've been thinking about this a lot and trying to think about <laughs> my audience here because I knew you guys would ha- kind of have this outlook of more of like a more business type outlook here. So here's, here's the line of thinking I'm going to shoot here. So I know what you're saying about, you know, the Nintendo switch isn't just a toy for me to play with. I get that. But at the same time, um, the, the, there's a, okay. Like you said, in the past, people mostly modded to bootleg shit and to pirate stuff. Like, People got chips for their dream, not their Dreamcast, but their PS1s, PS2s, and all that. But those days are kind of over because, like, the hardware we use now is more like a PC than a dedicated game console. And so, and especially with handhelds like the Vita, people have just been hacking the shit out of the Vita forever for the past few years. It's, like, way more fun than actually buying games and playing on a Vita. So the the switch is showing up in this in this uh, hacking scene as like the the big target. Like, look at all this cool stuff the homebrew community could do with this. And the issue with just outright banning all the homebrew users is that Nintendo is entering a fight that I feel like they they really aren't equipped to win because the pirate community is actually real or the homebrew community then the pirate community <laughs> follows them. Well, they follow after them. It's actually way more sophisticated than you guys think. So so just Nintendo going around just mass banning people and being like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, I'm banning you, banning you, banning you. It's creating this, and you'll see it, it's creating this environment where, okay, you banned my console because I was running an emulator. Now I'm gonna pirate. And that's and exactly actually, what Derek did. It, and that's, there's <laughs> actually like really sophisticated shit coming out right now. That makes pirating Switch games extremely easy, and I linked that article. And they're crea- so from a business decision, Sony doesn't do this, uh, Xbox didn't do this. They would ban you from online play, but they wouldn't like straight up ban your ass and try and break your console and try and like destroy your any access because then they're just pushing the homebrew community who's just here to play emulators and do overclocking and do all this cool stuff. Now they're pushing them towards piracy. They're like, no, fuck you. Now you have to pirate. So, so I so, think... So hang on. So hang on. Your argument here yes. right, is, is that I'm doing something you don't want me to do, and now you've made it difficult for me. I'm really going to fucking do something you don't want me to do. That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and kinda, like, for well, it's, like, what I'm saying is, okay, think of, this as like a, uh, think of this as like um, a criminal trial crime and punishment type thing Mm -hmm. you stole the bread i'm gonna chop off your arm it's like the the punishment is not fitting the crime here they're not punishing just piracy they're punishing anything to do but what what you're now saying is now you've chopped my arm off fuck you i'm gonna go and steal all the bread yeah exactly Uh, well you get a bunch of you get my mouth what okay well you get okay (laughs) but think of this realistically like okay you smoked pot your ass is going to prison you're, you know, and you create this environment of a bunch of pissed off criminals, they're not going to like reform. It's just going to get worse. And so I feel like Nintendo is like so, arming the homebrew community into the piracy community. They're pushing the solution. Mark? I, I disagree with that. Homebrew is always the first piracy comes immediately. Even right. if a lot of homebrew developers don't like it. And exactly. I'm right now, I hack any console I can. 
I am not upset if I'm banned from online play anymore because I understand that. However, if you ban me for being able to access the eShop on Switch, I've got no choice but to. I mean, it's not that well, I'm not well, going to say no choice. But it's, it's further than that, though. They're yeah, trying, they're doing these like more updates where you I, can't play your physical cartridges anymore. Yeah, breaking a console is a draconian response that I think is far above it. And I don't think even Justin thinks that should really be. I mean, he's going to joke with us, but, he, you know, it's, again, the thing to fit the crime, but I, I don't expect my hacker console to experience no consequence. But at the same time... How far, right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of measure. How far? Breaking someone's console they paid for just because they installed homebrew is excessive. Banning them from the eShop and online services is not. And right, and so if your console doesn't uh, function in any in. other way, hold on a second. Well, what was that, Nate? Really so quick, I just wanted to toss in. I, I, I'm, I have uh, Nintendo's official like terms of use up, um, and as far as um, as far as modifying and terminating services, as Nintendo reserves the right to modify, update, or discontinue our services or any features or portions thereof without prior notice. You agree that we can suspend or terminate your right to access our services at any time for any reason without notice, obligation, or liability to you. This is all so the stuff that we that's don't a, read. That's basically go fuck yourself. Like That yeah. is like the most legal way you can say... We'll do whatever we want. We'll yeah. do what we want. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do what we want. Um, and I, I'm not trying to chime in on one side or the other. I'm just simply saying. No, you're you're saying the facts. You're reading. You're reading saying, the stuff that Justin says we don't read, <laughs> and he's right. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I, I mean, it, well, it, there's the the other two things I wanted to talk about. Real, just real quick to toss in there because I found it interesting. Was the actual they have listed. Um, unacceptable terms of use it, for some reason it says acceptable uses of service but these are not acceptable uses of service um, <laughs> one is uh, attempt to reverse engineer any aspects of services or do anything that might discover source code or bypass or circumvent measures employed to prevent or limit access to any area content or code of services except otherwise extremely uh, expressly permitted by law and the other one was develop any third-party applications that interact with user content or service without prior written consent. It's the soft modding thing. Yeah. Either one of yeah. those would probably relate back to the mod. Oh, yeah. so Absolutely. However you feel about it, like you can, as shitty as it is, like it is in their terms of service on both um, and how they're going to react to it, which is basically, you know, you are up shit's creek. without. What it. I don't like is that the way it's written is they can terminate the services without reason. Yeah, but ha hang on, hang on. Boring. And it could be, of be covered that, in uh, Let Justin, let Justin that, say yeah. that is That is standard contractual law. It That's is, yeah. That is, that is in everything you've never read. Trust me. <laughs> trust, <laughs> trust, trust me. For a living, I would hope so. That, 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 that is to That's to cover their ass so that they don't do that and then they haven't written it and you sue them. That's all that is. That's um, CYA, yeah. cover your ass. Well, yeah. where, I'm, where I'm coming from isn't saying like, oh, it wasn't in the terms of service. Like, no, that's no. not what I'm saying. Like, of course they can put whatever they want in the terms of service and do whatever they want to you. That's not the, the issue isn't if they can. The question is, is if they should. And I would say, no, they shouldn't because they're taking a community that really does exist just for homebrew, like the people who overclock their switches which is now an official feature in some games, by the way, or and like even um, DF Retro hacked their, their uh, consoles to overclock their switches to test the hardware to get a better idea of what the hardware is capable of. Like there's a lot of legitimate uses for homebrew, but sure. they're saying, okay, no, we're going to treat you like you're a pirate. Like they're so like trying the, everything they can to make that switch not work the way in any way. So now that, okay, these homebrew users, their only option is now piracy. They have no kind of in-between. It's like, okay, even the physical cartridges I own because of these firmware loopholes where you can't run the game unless you update it, but you can't update it because you're banned from online. So it's just like you can never run the game. No other console has done that. Like the PS3 didn't do that. Um, I don't know about the PS4, but I know the PS3 definitely really didn't do that. A hack on PS4. Right. But, um... I don't have a trouble with them telling me I can't play in their playground if I've modified. But the, and 
Now, when they tell me I can't use my own hardware for my own personal use, that's too far. However, I will say this. You're never going to be able to tell who's just using homebrew and who's using homebrew and piracy. It's always that's the problem. Be, that's right. the problem. It's trying so, to figure out just by looking at someone like it's when flu season's coming. Who can, when you see people, how do you know who's already got it and who doesn't? Yeah, who just no has way, a regular cold? Who has a flu? Yeah. Yeah, it's always going to be a problem with this, and I'm totally okay with them telling me. I can't access the online service to buy homebrew because there's too much chance that I've got a hack on there that I can play. Because you see, my best friend's a high-level Call of Duty player. People are hacking consoles just to make their Call of Duty stuff work better. It's happened on PC. It's why things like, um, was it Hackbuster, Cheatbuster, whatever it's called. The it's reason it. I stopped, that's the reason I stopped playing uh, the Halo series because uh, – yeah. Particularly, this is a long time ago, but Halo 2, when I first started playing that online, dude, people were cheating like crazy. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Done. Definitely, it, dude. Yeah. And that's just, another reason why they're banning people for this because yeah. of. I uh, am absolutely cool with that. And like I said, I'm someone who hacks anything I can. But I understand that doing so means I'm removing myself from certain things. And I have no trouble with that. So, so here's, how far here's, is the question? That's yeah, the thing. So, so, so look, here, let me put this to you then, right? So the. Christ, I really am the most boring fart. Yeah, so the, the most, right, the most get the wild. Most, yeah. Oh shit. The most, the, most, the most valuable asset for a company is its its IP, right? Absolutely. Well, is it? It is for Nintendo, but is it for Sony and Microsoft? I would say their hardware is more valuable. Well, yeah, we're, because we're they're discussing hardware's IP. Okay. Well, we're discussing Nintendo, so let's stick with that. And okay. even if it's not the most. That you know, we, you, that's a, a anyway. moot point. It's 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 a it's you know it's key. We, you just said really really good point is they cannot tell who is doing what with why with where right. So yeah. so it's not for them to police who's doing what why where. And we were talking earlier, and I'm going to tie this back nicely. We were talking about some chancers who have set up a business where they put games in plastic cases and they charge you $50 for it. I will, I will tell you as sure as shit, if someone can get into that firmware and hack it, they will take it, they will put it on an open source piece of uh, software, they will then add, add, attach it to hardware and they will end up selling it and where that will be sold is in the East, more likely China, oh, doesn't, which doesn't give two shits about copyright. So yeah. the problem is, if you don't police it somewhere, you, you know, you cause a problem. So going back to your, you know, your um, catch, catching someone smoking pot and, you know, that's, I know everyone has their view on that. If you don't start somewhere, the, the argument is that it scales into wholesale drug use. Yeah, it's, it, and, and I know that the, the weed smokers out there will say, well, hang on a minute. And, and that's exactly why. If you don't stop it somewhere, that causes that exacerbated problem. Well, hang on a minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm. I'm. Hang well, on, I have to be careful. I think, uh, you're not smoking your I, crack right now, Nate. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think this is an interesting point because there's there's no real absolutes, but the thing is, is that Nintendo lost the battle the day that the Switch came out. That thing, its security is a joke. It got hacked. The, the Nintendo security is a complete joke. They have no defenses against the hackers. It's it's child's play compared to the PS4 and Xbox One. Oh, it's yeah, just, and a lot, but a lot of their online services are a joke to begin with. It, it's it's, it's not, a doesn't complete compare to a lot of other. Companies. It's a complete joke. They're they're not going to stop it. They can ban everyone on Earth. They're not going to stop it because they don't have the security. Like the PS4, the reason why there's not a lot of piracy on the PS4 is because that damn thing is hard to break open and like it's got a lot of security on there. So people just are like, it's not worth it. But the Switch, it's a handheld. People love uh, hacking handhelds. That's like, handhelds are fun to hack. And then it's laughably easy to hack. It's, they've already lost that battle. So the question is, okay, you've got all of this, this user base that has homebrew. What do you do with them? Do you limit what they can do to, a, I would say, a reasonable degree, which is no online eShop, no online play, but you can still update your games so that you're not getting locked out of them or you're not putting these arbitrary locks on games in the first place? And just leave it at that, and then people will probably continue to pirate. But or do you push people who wouldn't pirate into this group where now they're really feeling justified? Okay, we have no choice; we have to pirate. 
let's make piracy easy. Let's make it really accessible. Let's make it easy. Like everyone's doing it. And that's what they've created. Like switch piracy is no joke. It's out of control right now. And it's super What's the easy. What's the solution then? But, but also, are you saying, it does sound a little bit like you're saying that if Nintendo stood up and said, you know what, we've had a, we've had a jolly good think about this. And what we thought is, you homebrew guys, you're a bloody good bunch. So, and you're very, your integrity is wonderful. I can, see, I can see it in your eyes. So you guys, you're all cool. Crack on. We're not going to do anything. And, that, and then, and then you, you guys all turn around and go, well, oh, do you know what? This Nintendo lot, they're bloody great. No piracy from us because they've just let us do home. So, so are, that- you saying, though, are you saying, though, that that's how you feel about the homebrew scene, that at the, at the end of the day, they will pirate? Like, at the no, end of the day, the no, homebrew you, guys No, will- you said, you yes. said that if they got pushed, they would turn to piracy because they were really upset. Those were your words, not mine, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this I is- agree. <laughs> okay. That's right. Like, okay... You have your Switch. Okay, because this happens on PS3s. I'm, I hacked my PS3, and uh, I didn't pirate on it. I never pirated a single game on my PS3 because I didn't really and for all those emulators have to. you ran. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess if you throw in pirated Nintendo games on my PS3, <laughs> whatever. But I didn't pirate PS3 games on there because right. I had no... Why would I? I didn't have to as a homebrew guy. On the Switch, you have to pirate now. You can't buy the games and put them in your switch and play them. You cannot do that because it locks you out of updating and then it locks you out of playing. You have no choice. If you want to play that switch, you can't buy the games even physically and play them on there anymore. Nintendo has forced your hand on Sony. Sony would let you buy the discs, put them in the PS3 and play them. They would allow that. They'd say, okay, you can still, okay, you can't play online. You can't use the eShop, but you can still buy the games Put them in your PS3 and play them. You can still yep. go do that. Okay. Well, what also what Nintendo have done is said, you could just buy another Switch and not be caught. Yeah. yeah. There's that option. That's too. Right. But are, are people going to do that? Or are they just going to be like, fuck it, I'm going to pirate. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to play on Switch. Just like play online. Am I going to drop online. another 300 on a Switch? Or am I going to take three seconds and pirate this game? Hmm. To play developer's advocate... Um, Going back to what you were saying, like, yeah, that's, 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 I kind of thought of that. I was like, hey, yeah, that, that works. Um, so to play developer's advocate, you know, when you're talking about um, uh, setting limits and doing this and doing that, like uh, yeah. one thing I think to keep in mind though is also that would devote teams. Like you're going to now have to pay people to come up with these limits and then enforce them and then figure out how to do this and and set up. Like there's going to be a whole process involved when it's so much easier to just press the nuke button on somebody. And I, and I, I wouldn't say, say so. I'd say Nintendo is spending a lot more time attacking pe- people on homebrew than just being like blanket punishment. Like because they're adding things in that normally aren't on consoles. Like you, before the Switch, I've never heard of not being able to play a game unless it's updated. But the Switch will say, no, 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 you cannot play this game. Unless it is updated. No, yeah. that's that's definitely not true. Cause no, it is true. No, it's not. It is. No, it is now. No. It is now. It wasn't in the past. It PS, is now. No, no, no. It, PS4, PS3. PS4, PS3 all does the same. No, PS3 definitely does not. I know that for a fact. The PS3 lets you play. It says, hey, do you want to play this? Or do you want to upgrade to the latest version? Or whatever. PS3 or PS4? PS3. Maybe that's true. I haven't played a PS3 uh, in uh, years. Okay, yeah, I'll... I'll back off PS3. PS4. PS4, Xbox One, PC. Definitely. 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 That's, just the, that's the standard of the industry now, but I'm going to say this as a homebrew supporter. <laughs> You're never going to be able to separate again. It's the whole thing about trying to find the terrorists and the group of normal people. Do I think homebrew is great? Absolutely. But Nintendo is going to have to stop it somewhere, and it's all we really have here, our disagreement is not that it needs to be done, really. It's what measure is too much so do you guys feel going as far as not being able to physically play the cartridges you own do you think that's going too far do you think it's just like yeah that's going too far i think yeah because right now i'll tell you now this is not an official super nes card it'll play on a regular super nes and it's pirate 
but there's nothing like there's no reason that says I should be able to use them and then not be able to go back and use my regular Super NES cards. However, and that's also on 29 year old hardware, you know. Yeah, but it was it was being done back then. I mean, unlicensed yeah. games were a thing. Sure, yeah, all licensed games. games. Yeah, this NES has a lockout chip on it that prevents or tries to prevent people from running up. And there's cards. region region locks was, and things too. And that was circumvented back <laughs> when it was still a live console. Right. And that's well, always going to happen. Let me and let me let me rein this in a bit. Here. Let me rein this in and loop it back and say what's briefly here because i think we're uh, about at the limit here let's talk about solutions like what can they do to solve this problem i think they do it already what are they trying Talking to do or what should they no, do? what should what should they do to okay. to, to i'll tell you what these homebrew they're... guys and eliminate piracy what, what do they do okay so what they are doing is they're trying to destroy the functionality of the hackable switches. So the first line of switches have that Tegra yep. uh, exploit. Yeah, it's not they're a Tegra fault. Just, they're trying to just destroy those as much as possible, and then they have the new switch that came out, which has a more yep. secure... That I just got. Yeah. So they, that's their goal, is to just try and break those systems, get people to throw them in the garbage, and buy the new switches, and then, oh, homebrew, the whole issue solved. That's what they're trying to do. But... Because the there was solution. there was a flaw in the chip in the original chip that allowed. Yeah, and it was yeah, known before right. Switch was released. If I remember, I'm yeah, I may be wrong, Nate. You may want to check me on this later on. But the Tegra chip that they use, I want to say that flaw was existing before. It was it was existing prior. Yeah, they didn't know if it would be fixed or not, but they did know it existed. And they didn't know that it was going to be accessible, like exported, like this. Is probably the word I should use. Right. Honestly, you're never going to appease homebrew fans and block piracy because the two are always intertwined. Not that I'm saying that's a good thing. Not that I'm saying every single person who uses homebrew is a pirate, but the two are always going to be intertwined and that's to homebrew's detriment. Because one and, allows the other. Right. One absolutely. Allows the other. Once you run unsigned code, you can do anything. Buy is unsigned code by definition. Blocking online services in the eShop, I think it is the best way to do it. And then people won't do it because they're like, Oh, well, then I can't play online with my friends. I can't buy new games digitally. Blocking right. people from using the physical cards is extreme to me. Breaking the whole console should be illegal. And under a Library of Con Congress rule about jailbreaking, I believe it is in the U.S., I, no offense to Mr. Justin, but I'm not going to say anything about the U.K., EU, or Japan, or anything else, because I don't know. But it's you're never going to appease both groups. And yeah, I think, you know, and what I, I should clarify, when they're breaking the console, they're not breaking it as in, like, it doesn't turn on. What they're doing is they're trying to... They add firmware in. The one thing you can get when you got a banned console is firmware updates so that they can pump in code that says, you can't play this game, you can't play this game, you can't play this game. So what they're doing is they're adding this code in to say, you can't play these old versions of these games. And so when you take your cartridge, you stick it in, it says, this game is not up to date. Please update to play. Update? Yes. You cannot update, you banned piece of shit. And then... <laughs> There's ways around that. <laughs> and that goes okay, back to square saying. one, which is you should not have hacked your Switch in the first place. Well, the thing <laughs> is, though... Okay, so if you guys think I'm here complaining like, oh, no, no, because, of course, there's a way to solve it. How do you solve it? Hmm. You buy another Switch and you have both. Or you pirate the shit out of the game, or you do illegal firmware updates, or you know you you go deeper into the piracy hole. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like it's pushing you. We're here to play emulators on your Switch. That's what you came here to do. But now it's pushing you. Oh, this game won't run. I have to pirate it now. Oh, this game, this firmware won't run. I have to do these weird, deeper. They're pushing you deeper towards the piracy. Where if they just said, okay, no online, no eShop but you can still play those games you already purchased on physical cartridges and put them in there and you can still update them. I think it would actually, you guys think it doesn't make a difference, but I think it would deter a lot less of the scene to go towards piracy than right now where your only choice is shit. I got to pirate this game now. I own it's it here. I want to play it. If no, they did allow updates for technology. physical cards, I think that probably would be okay. But it may be, and I'm not saying this as a, I know for sure, it may be something with how they ban on eShop. But 
we're never going to get to a, a good middle ground that doesn't involve that, and that's just the nature of it. Do I think that it's a good thing? Not particularly, but it's just it's it's how it is. Sometimes, I mean, the middle ground means sometimes that you're not going to like everything about it, and there's just not a good way to do it that isn't going to be too far in some direction and not enough in another. I, I I would just like to throw in, though, let's look at a platform that excels at embracing modders and embracing uh, people that, you know, their creativity and stuff. If you look at, like, Steam Workshop. Absolutely. It's, um, they, you know, great platform to be able to build stuff and do stuff and, and be embraced. Not only that, but be embraced. Um, and I think I think Nintendo could actually do that. I think they could set up Nintendo something community and make it official. And they will it, in like 2050. Well, well, you know. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, I, I think that goes to the solution aspect of you know they could embrace these people and then drop the hammer hard on people that are outliers, the 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 deviants who are specifically modding specifically to pirate. Um, so that people, you know, inside the circle that are just wanting a different user interface or a different whatever, um, you know, they're, those people aren't being punished. I think you could, I think there is a middle ground, essentially, I guess is what I'm saying. And it's just, it's a hard line to walk, but you would have less um, sympathy for the, for the people like Mark or Derek who just wanted simple, small mods. Um, as opposed to somebody who's like, they get all their games via pirate. You know what I mean? Um, so I just, yeah, anyway. Well, one, one mod that um, actually affected how retail games come out now is the overclocking mod. People are like, people who knew the uh, hardware is like, Nintendo, you are underclocking this hardware way too much. And so they went in and added this overclocking mod. DF Retro did a video about it. And Nintendo's like, hey, that's a good idea. And so now there are some updates for certain games like Breath of the Wild where they added in some overclocking to sections so that it wasn't so choppy. So it's like, there you go. There's, there's a homebrew, legitimate use of homebrew that affected the community positively. There's lots of examples of that. So look at um, I, iPhones. A lot of the th features in modern day iOS came from the jailbreak scene. And that's fine. Like, yeah. Nate makes an excellent point. Like maybe, I'm not sure if this is a good word for it, but like a developer mode would be a really good middle ground so guys who want to play with just the software who aren't wanting a pirate per se but are just wanting to mess with the iOS play or around even, with the chip but or I'm not sure if you can do that without a lot of piracy it won't, it won't work as soon, no. as soon as, because this is all based on the premise that you've appeased this this community of, of the, the good people the ones that if you fuck them off they'll go and pirate you've appeased them absolute bollocks as soon as you do this what's the first thing will happen a group of people yeah. will try and hack it. So it, it's... Yeah. You know, no, it's already hacked. It is hacked. There's no... No, I, no the, develop, the developer mode. The de I, I'm just saying that would be like a good... If you could find a way to, like, to do it, that'd be like the nicest of the middle grounds. I'm not saying it's possible. I'm just saying it would be... like would, If they really were honest about, oh, I only want a homebrew to play with the software, that should do work. it. But it would... Well, it won't, it won't work because someone will just want to hack that thing. And, and then you've also got the same, same problem that you need to think about. It's like, you know, you talk about emulators and ROMs and that opens up a whole nother discussion. That's a whole nother topic. You know, yeah. I, I don't know the legalities around that. Nintendo I, considers it all piracy. They consider right. everything all the way back to the end. Well, piracy. And, and look, to be honest, you know, my kind of loose understanding of this is, you know, everyone when i was a kid growing up it was always the, the same excuse thrown all the time oh i only want it as a backup of the original copy yeah, i've got oh <laughs> shit that's the yeah. point i made at the beginning yeah yeah, yeah but that's just, a whole nother that's a whole nother can of worms there emulation but, but, but you're yeah putting, emulation but the thing is you're putting nintendo uh, in a problem in a problem position there because if they say look let's have a look at a nice middle ground we'll call it developer mode and look you guys knock yourself out you can go and put an emulator on there you can run all sorts of shit on there. Then they, what they are effectively doing is agreeing to you running what is effectively pirated software, which then puts them in a, li in a liability position. And then that's a, another massive problem. I'm I mean, not saying, I don't know about that, but I'll give you a good example. A really good parallel is the Sony PSP or PS Vita and the homebrew scene for that. So it was always kind of an arms race between 
the the hackers and Sony, but none of the PSP or PS Vita owners, like they were trying to shut down the homebrew or like close it off, but they weren't going as so far as to like just try and destroy any functionality of your Vita. And I've even read interviews where basically Sony understood that this is just something that's going to happen these days. You can't brute force the homebrew community out of existence. It's not going to happen. They're too, they're just going to be there. So how are you going to deal with them? Are you going to deal with them kind of in a really extreme way where now you're encouraging or pushing people towards a certain set of actions, or are you just going to kind of choose a more, like a pragmatic approach, pragmatic approach, right? You can't smash out the homebrew scene. It will not happen. No matter how many consoles, Nintendo bands, no matter if they set your switch on fire, if you put homebrew on there, there's no stopping it. So what are you going to do? Are you going to like completely try and derail the user experience? Are you just going to try and limit certain things to dissuade most people from doing homebrew? It's like, uh, I want to use the eShop. I want to play online. I'm not going to do homebrew. But the people who have homebrew, you don't want to push them towards, okay, now I can't do anything. Now I need to pirate. And then you get these groups of people creating all these kinds of tools to make piracy much more easier, much more accessible, much more, like, common. Like, Vita piracy is there, but it wasn't. In the amount of years Vita's been around, it did not accelerate this quickly. This switch piracy problem is huge. It's like, and I'm just saying, Nintendo's actions are just adding fuel to the fire. They're I would making argue worse. the Vita piracy is also a side effect of the fact that Vita memory was extremely expensive until the SD to Vita system right. came out. Well, piracy, and, and piracy is one of the things. Cheap. Piracy is one of the things that sunk the Dreamcast too, because it was so easy. You could just get yeah. a CD burner and burn the game, you know. And that was one of the things that sunk because there was no, I don't think uh, Sega had any sort of protection uh, at all. It was that easy. So, Once the software was figured out, they didn't. Yeah. So there is, there's certainly sure. valid criticism yeah. I think Nintendo has. But the thing about it is, Nintendo exists for one reason. They exist to make profit. And I understand that. As someone who does like homebrew and like hacking, I accept that Nintendo's first priority should be to defend their bottom line. Do I think that some of the stuff that they do may go over? Absolutely. But you're never going to get to the point where the homebrew scene is appeased by anybody. And at the same time, I maybe have a s- accepted developer mode where they put mods in is one thing, but we're never going to get rid of it. And the homebrew scene is always going to be defined by the pirates. You're, you're always defined by your worst actors. It's just, I've accepted that. And, I'm just going to say if I hack something, I expect to lose act of something because of the worst actions. Nothing yeah. I can do about it. That's just how life is. Yeah. Okay. All right, fellas. Final thoughts. Uh, okay. I'll go first. One <laughs> easy, one easy solution. Just make it crystal clear. that If you so much as blink in the wrong way, then your switch will blow up and burn your house down. <laughs> <laughs> there, we, there we go. I agree. And um, my final thoughts are, are the same as they were before, which is, you know, just know that if you choose to hack a piece of hardware, um, that there are consequences. That's all, you know. Derek? Absolutely. I believe that if you, hack, you can't hack something, you don't own it. But I expect there to be consequences for my actions. And I don't see any problem with losing access to certain services. Taking it so far as to not be able to use a console at all is excessive, but we're not arguing about what's right or wrong. Then we're discussing how far is too far, and that's a different argument. It's yeah. just you're never going to get rid of the bad actors. That's all there is to it. Okay. Mark? I don't know if I did a good job convincing you guys of anything, maybe, but... That's I just guess. the nature of the world right now. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> so... Yeah, my, my stance was basically that the homebrew scene, hate them, think they're filthy pirates, think what you want of them. They're still going to be around. There's a lot of legitimate uses of homebrew that ex- that have benefit everyone, not just the pirates or whatever. A lot of people, though, seem to always lump those two together. And I, it's, I guess it's just the w- nature of the beast. I don't think it's fair, but I guess whatever. So my think is 
uh, Nintendo, please stop trying to brick every single aspect of the user interface. Maybe let people play their cartridges. <laughs> yeah, I think a more pragmatic approach we can all agree on would be nice from Nintendo. So, all right, fellas, uh, on behalf of Derek Moore, Justin Day, Mark MSX, our producer Nate Rowe, I'm Zach Smith. We are the game fellas. We will see you next time. Later. Yeah, do you guys, I mean, do you know where Idaho is, Justin? Being a Brit? Okay, I think, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and... It's fine myself, if you don't. I'm gonna, I think it neighbors Wyoming. Yeah, you got it. Boom! <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's hilarious because I don't fucking know. Yes, I don't, get fucking, I don't really know, to be very honest, you know. I'm having some of that. School, yeah. nothing but net. Nicely done. The states yeah. that matter have oceans connected to them. You know what I mean? That's all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Say that now till the ocean comes up on your ass. And you're, all, <laughs> right. you're all run into the mountains of Idaho. Like, yo, we need your mountains right now. You need to stay dry. No, fuck you guys. Go back to Florida. <laughs> I got to ask Zach if it counts that I'm hipster if I only collect new records on vinyl. Like, I don't. I have a few. I have a few soul records and stuff on vinyl, but I actually most of my vinyl collection is new releases, not the Beatles. Most or, of mine is heavy metal, so you, yeah. um, Mark, you can't win because you, you can enjoy music because it definitely does, and I think we all agree sound better on vinyl. But because but because you're under the age of thirty, you're going to get absolutely pwned every time you say it. Justin, <laughs> how old are you? I've got a, um, I've got quite an important question to ask, uh, Derek. How old are you? Thirty-four. You have to be shitting me. <laughs> how old did you think you was? I mean, I'd have gone forty-four all day. <laughs> I thought you were sixty-seven. Forty-four, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and we have you our in fairness, in fairness, Justin, you look about seventeen, bro. So. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say <laughs> Justin Bieber over here. Okay, don't be. Oh. Oh, I, I'm gonna take hey, Justin Bieber. <laughs> he's got the ladies. He's got the money. That's not too bad.